Good morning. Paano mahina? Good morning. Good morning. Could we just give God our very best clap offering today? Amen and amen. It's a beautiful Sunday. Once again, we're here at the house of God. Did you miss, miss each other today? So one week tayo hindi nakita and it's good to be back here at home. Why? For last week, I've been to Ramon Isabella. We had our con- counterflow event with the youth there. And yes, more than 200 youths got empowered by the presence of God. And today, it's good to be back and to preach God's word here at Marriott Hotel. So are you excited to hear God's word today? Are you sure? Parang hindi. Are you sure? Are you excited to hear God's word? Amen. I'm also excited to preach to you God's word. And before that, I would just like to show you a video about more about our preaching for today. But just a precaution, it's kind of bloody. So if you're, you just took your breakfast, don't vomit at the person right next to you. Night right next to you, okay, Bayon? So let's watch this video first. Yours is the picture that I took when I flashed the camera in your face. It's all out of focus and overexposed. Like. Like a firework went off in my face. wants that kind of death in their life? Of course, no one would like that death. So who watched that movie already? That's Final Destination. Some of you had watched that movie already. And what's the message there? You know what? That guy who died in the latter part of the video, they had a message. It's from a picture. And then they found out that his his face was in full of light. And then later on, they didn't mind that message. They didn't pay attention to that message or from kanino man yon. And then that's the way also he died. So there's a message before his death. And right now, in our lives today, God has a message also for each and every one of us right now before we reach our final destination. That's our title for today, Final Destination. And of course, we've seen that we don't like that kind of destination. So what are the kinds of destination ba in our lives? So let's open our Bibles in, chap- in Proverbs chapter 2, verses 21 to 22. So it says here, For the upright will dwell in the land, and the blameless will remain in it, but the wicked will be cut off from the earth, and the unfaithful will be uprooted from it. So could we bow down in heads and let us pray. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Lord Jesus Christ. See, Lord Jesus Christ. We invite your presence to be in this place, Lord God. There's no power in my words, Lord God. There's no power in this day, Lord God, without you. Lord God, you are our power, you are our strength. And today, Lord God, we ask for your anointing, we ask for your wisdom, and we ask for your favor. Open our hearts, open our minds, Lord, that we may receive your word for our lives. We claim the victory, and we give you back all the glory and all the praise in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Everybody shout, amen and amen. Could you just give God our very best clap offering again? All right, so this is Solomon talking to us again in his Proverbs, a wise saying. So there are two destinations in life. So number one, we've talked about this already, that we want to enjoy life. Who wants to enjoy life? Of course, we all want to enjoy life, but the other destination is death. Just like what happened in the previous movie, we don't want that kind of death. It's a tragic event. It's a terrible event. That kind of death is not what we want, but we want to enjoy life. Our lives. So if we want to enjoy our lives, what should we do? In the words of God, it says, these are the do's and don'ts for us to enjoy life. God is telling us we need to be upright for us to dwell in the land. If you want to enjoy life, if you want to enjoy the service, if you want to enjoy your whole time here on earth, you must be upright. You must be right in the eyes of God. We must be good and pleasing in the eyes of God. And how do we do that? We must be blameless. Who's blameless here? So everyone is with a blame. Every one of us is dirty. Every one of us are sinning. And it's very hard to be blameless. But sabi ni Lord, we should not be wicked. 
If you want to enjoy life, don't be wicked, don't be evil, don't do foolish things. Let's not be unfaithful to our God. Sino ba dito mga unfaithful? May unfaithful ba dito? So wala nagtataas na kamay, ayaw umamin. So ako po, ay, may point din naging unfaithful ako. But God is telling us right now to be upright. Be blameless. But of course, being upright is very hard, right? It's very hard to be upright. It's very hard to be pure. It's very hard to be good and pleasing to our God. So what is God telling us? My son or my daughter, if you receive my words and treasure my commands within you. So if you want to be upright, if you want to be good in God's sight, God is telling us, receive my words, treasure my commands. So how do we receive God's words? So basically, we use our ears, right, to receive the words here on earth. But in this life, sometimes we get to hear so many bad things. We get to hear so many bad words around us which corrupt us. So mostly in the news, this is what we hear, get to hear often. We hear bad news about our country. So, so may victim po ba niyan ng tanim bala in our time today? You know what? The, the elderly, the elder woman who was just the recent victim is a friend pala of my friend dun sa Ramon Isabella sa North Luzon region. Friend pala din na yung victim. So this is what we hear. This is where we, our ears hear in our day-to-day lives bad things. We all almost hear that every na- now and then. And not only that, when we go to the office, when we go to school, we get to hear bad things about our leaders. We get to hear bad things about our friends. We get to hear bad, bad things about our teachers, about our bosses. Or sometimes, we also get to hear bad things that are tell- being told upon our lives. So these words, these things corrupt us. And okay lang eh, kung it's all out on the outside, but you know what, when we get home pa, this is still what we also hear. Bad words at home which corrupts us and which destroy us. So what is God telling us? This is the world that we're living in. So many bad words, so many evil words coming inside our ears. So what is God telling us? Incline your ear to wisdom. Instead of inclining our ears to the world, instead of inclining our ears, hearing, our, hearing the words of the world, Incline your ears to wisdom. Turn it to God. Why? Because wisdom is God's message for you. Do you want to receive God's word for your life? Amen. We want to receive God's word and wisdom is God's message for each and every one of us. And what, how do we incline our ear to wisdom? It says in his word, apply your heart to understanding. Apply your heart to understanding. Try to understand the message that God has for you. So for example, in our lives, we try to play a game. We try to take a challenge. And for us to win a prize, we must understand it so we may get that prize, so we may reach the goals. So example, so who here had already won a prize in this game? So you could see this, right? Sa mga arcade. Meron na po bang nanalo sa game na to? Di ba? Si Kuya Mike nanalo, ng, na, nanalo sa stuffed toy. But in my entire life, I've never won a stuffed toy playing this game. And I try so hard to give my best. I try so hard to understand the game, to understand the logic, but it was to no avail. I never got a stuffed toy. And we try to understand things so, so that we may get a prize. But you know what? The prize here on earth, the prize that God has for us, is not just a stuffed toy, but these are treasures in life. So just like this treasure, so for the women, how we desire to have this treasure, right? Gusto ba natin yung treasure na yan? So mga wives na nandito, did you receive something like this from your husband? You know? Sino dito nag-receive niyan? So most of us receive that. So for, for, the, for the girlfriends, was boyfriends, how we want to receive that from our boyfriend or from the, from the boyfriends here, how you want to get that money, how you want to understand how to get the money to buy our girlfriend, something like this. And it's, it's the same way in trying to understand wisdom. God says in His Word, yes, if you cry out for discernment, What's discernment? To know what's coming next. To know what's, what we're, what we're going to take. Where are we going to take the right turn or the left turn? Where are we going? To know what's next. If you cry out for discernment 
and lift your voice for understanding if you're, you just become desperate to understand the wisdom from God, to understand the message that He has for us. If you seek her as silver and search for her as for hidden treasures, just like how we long for the treasure, how we long for that ring, how we are desperate to get that for our girlfriends or from our boyfriends, what will happen in verse 5? then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. So ano daw? Ba't ganun? So I, I thought it's all about wisdom. So another additional term, another new terminology, the fear of the Lord and the knowledge of wisdom. So this, this preaching is so much full of terms, new terms, and it's hard to understand. It's hard to prepare. But let's look at it. What is this fear of the Lord? In verse 10, it says, The fear of the Lord kasi is the beginning of wisdom. And the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. So the fear of the Lord, it's a separate preaching, but just a summary of it. If we get to know who our God is, we talked about this last week, if we get to know who our God is, how powerful He is, how, how wisdomful He is, how all-present He is in our lives, we get to know what to do, to do what is right or what is wrong. And when we get to fear who our God is, of course, we will choose to do what is right in our lives because we fear Him. And there comes wisdom. And where does wisdom come from? For the Lord gives wisdom from His mouth come knowledge and understanding. So it, this just tells us that wisdom is not just something, uh, a material thing, but wisdom is the words coming from our God. And wisdom is God's message for each and every one of us today. And wisdom is the ingredient to be upright. Do you want to be upright? Man, you want to be upright. We want to do good. We want to be right in, in the eyes of God. And what happens when we're upright in the sight of God? What happens in Proverbs chapter 2, verse 7 to 8, it says here, He stores up sound wisdom for the upright. So if you're the one who's desiring to be upright, if you're the one who's desiring to be right in front of God, God will freely give you His wisdom. And when we're upright, what happens? He is a shield to those who walk uprightly. Do you need some defense from your friends? Do you need some defense from the evil spirits of this world? God is a shield to those who are upright. He guards the paths of justice and preserves the way of His saints. This is how God wants to protect you if you choose to be to live an upright life. And not only that, then you will understand righteousness and justice, equity, and every good path. When we're upright, when we're with the Lord, we get to understand what's happening in this life. So basically, the upright enjoys life. That's why we enjoy life. Because God is with us. That's why we're able to to enjoy life. Do you want that kind of life? Amen. Then choose a path to be upright. So what happens when we're upright? What, what ano bang meron when we have wisdom in our lives? In verse 10 it says, when wisdom enters your heart and knowledge is pleasant to your soul. If this is the path that you want to take, if this is the track that you want to choose in your life, I want wisdom, Lord. I'm desperate for it. I want to try to understand your message for my life. This is pleasant for me. I desire this. I like to enjoy life. What happens? This is the path of wisdom. And about meron with wisdom. What does it give to us? In verse 11, it says, discretion will preserve you. So another new term. It's really full of terms, new terms here. But discretion, what is discretion? It is the right to choose what should be done or showing discernment. So do you know what to do in your life? I personally don't know what to do in my life, what choices should I make in my life? As an example, with regards to love, who is your favorite love team of this time? Are you fa fans of these people? May Aldab, may Enrique Hill, Katniel, and Nadine Lustre. Are you fans of these people? Well, some are not. Some are, uh, some are fans of them. So love lives, love teams. And you know what? In life, for the singles here, just like me, it's so hard to choose the perfect match for your life, right? It's very hard to choose the right person that is destined for you. And in my life before, in my previous love stories, 
It was an epic fail. Why? Because I didn't have discernment. I didn't have the right discretion. That's why all my love lives before are a complete disaster. Because I don't know the right and the wrong. I don't know the path that I should take in those love stories. But you know what? With wisdom, we get to have the right choices in life. Because this is God, how God protects us. He gives us the right choices in life. And in verse 11, not only that, that's not only what wisdom does for us, an understanding will keep you. And you know what? Sino dito nagkamali na sa buhay? Now, all of us made a mistake in our lives. And when we don't get to understand our mistakes, just like for my previous love stories, I didn't understand my mistake, I didn't understand my wrongness there, I get to repeat it all over again. Repeat, repeat the same mistake because I don't understand it. But with wisdom, this is what God is offering to us, His protection for our lives that we may not be wrong in this life. Do you want that? Amen. We, don't, we want that protection from God. Why? Why do we need that protection? Why? Because He wants, God wants us to be delivered from the way of evil. Why in this world there are going to be people who want to destroy you? There are going to be evil spirits who wants to bring us down. Could you look at your seatmate right now? Is she the evil person uh, in your life? So I, I'm sure she's not the evil person in your life because she's here with us in church. But when we go outside, there's going to be so many people who would love to bring us down. And God wants us to be protected from them. Just like in verse 12, it says, from the man who speaks perverse things. God wants us to be protected from people you unintentionally meet. Just like in the office. It's unintentional to be with uh, bad influence in the office. I've, I've worked for almost two years. And in the office, I unintentionally meet people. And there will be people who would lead me to bad influence, bad vices, uh, to drugs, to women. It's, it's all over the place. Uh, uh, a bad influence. But... We didn't intentionally go with them. It's unintentional that we meet them. And it's all right. And God wants us to be protected from them. Next, it says in verse, in verse 13, from those who leave the paths of uprightness. Why there's going to be people who are in leadership who's going to get stumbled, right? God wants us to be protected from people who get stumbled. Why I have experienced this? When I was still a kid, I've been looking up to my leaders. They are my heads in, in the church, and I look up to them because they're setting the standard. They're setting a good example in church. But, uh, of course, being human, they would commit something wrong. They would be committing a failure. They would be committing a terrible sin, an immoral sin, and they could not recuperate from that. They could not come back from that. And then what would happen to them? We, they would go stumbling down. They would go down the road and into the wicked path. And me looking up to them, somehow I'm also discouraged. I'm also affected. When people from top, from people who we look up to get stumbled, gets going down, we get affected. And it happens that we also get stumbled down. But God wants us to be protected from people who we look up to who stumbles. And finally, it says in his word in verse 13, to walk in the ways of darkness. God wants us to be protected. God's wa God wants you to be protected from people who intentionally destroys you. Do, are you experiencing it right now? There are people who want to destroy you. There are people who are bad mounting you. There are people who are gossiping about you in the business world, in church, or in school, or wherever. There's going to be people who would try to destroy you, but God wants you to be protected from them. And not only that, we may be looking at the people around us, but sometimes it's ourselves who's intentionally destroying us. Just like me, it's, it's, it doesn't mean that I'm here on stage, I, I'm not tempted into sin, right? All of us are tempted into sin, and sometimes when we indulge into that small, small sin, we are intentionally destroying ourselves and God wants us to be protected from all these things. Why? Because we have another choice. If we have the path of wisdom, there's also a path of the wicked. And what happens when we take that path of the wicked? In verse 14, it says, 
These wicked people rejoice in doing evil and delight in the perversity of the wicked. As I've told you a while ago, there are two destinations in life. There are two final destinations in life. It's either we enjoy life or we experience a terrible and tragic death. And there are two paths to take. For us to enjoy life, let's take the path of wisdom. But if you want to experience a tragic death, let's take the path of the wicked. And in our lives, the people try to sabi dun, rejoice in doing evil, delight in the perversity of the wicked. Sometimes we, we really enjoy this life. Just like, uh, just small compromises. Like, uh, let's, I, I just want to drink some alcohol today. Diba? I just want to drink. It's, it's, it may be good. It may be bad. Uh, the Bible says it's, it's uh, the people there in the Bible drinks wine. So I want also to drink something. Just, just a small thing, right? So it's just casual drinking. I don't drink every day. I don't, di naman ako nalalasing. So, konti lang. And let's party. Let's enjoy life. Let's, let's, let's live the best of our lives. And then it will level up. Uh, people of today don't use uh, Marlboro already. They don't use cigarettes anymore. There's something new today. It's called vape. You know, this is what's new when you go to the colleges and the universities. This is what they try. So it's not as terrible as cigarette. It's, it's just purely smoke or whatever. I don't understand it. But it's vape. It's just vapor. It's all right. It's all right to compromise. It's just something little. And let's just enjoy life. Let's rejoice in doing something little evil. And then lastly, sometimes it, it's, let's try something medicinal. Let's try something like juts. Let's try something like marijuana. It's medicinal. Some people, it's all right. For some, it's not good. In other countries, it's legalized. In the Philippines, it's not legalized. Let's, let's just try it. Let's enjoy. Let's party. Malit lang yan. It won't affect us. There's nothing wrong that's gonna happen to us. It's all right. Let's rejoice. Let's rejoice. And in verse 15, it says, Whose ways are crooked? You know what? This is what happens when we purely rejoice and don't think about it anymore. Little did we know that the path we're taking pala is already crooked. The path we're taking is already full of potholes. But we don't recognize it. We don't mind it. Why? Because we're enjoying our lives. We're rejoicing and doing evil. It's party, party. Dugs, dugs, dugs like that. Right? So we enjoy life and we don't mind. And because of that, the people are looking at us. Oy, parang... Parang sablay na tong tao na to. Parang may mali sa tao na to. But we don't care. We don't mind. Though we also feel something wrong within us. Parang may mali. But we don't mind. Why? Because we're enjoying doing what is wicked. We're enjoying doing what is evil. But later on, what would happen to us in verse 15, and who are devious in their paths? Little did we know we're already so deep. We're already so deep that it's already the path of the wicked na talaga. Just like what happened to the, to the countries who legalized marijuana. It's just medicinal. It's just little. But later on, at the start, when it was legalized, 59 people die of marijuana overdose in Colorado and Washington after its legalization. So they parted. Yes, it's already legalized. But what happened to them? They were put into a terrible death, a tragic death. And we, and we enjoy too much. We enjoy, rejoice when we don't have wisdom anymore. We don't have discernment anymore. We don't have the right choices and protection from the Lord anymore. This is the path we're taking already. A thorny path. A terrible path. A devil path. An evil path. We're in. We're not sure if we're there in the middle of it. We're not sure if we're gonna be able to get out from it. And this, not only that, it doesn't stop here. But this is the ultimate thing that God wants us to be protected from. From verse 16, it says, To deliver you from the immoral woman. To deliver you from the immoral woman. Who's this immoral woman that God is talking about in verse 16? It says, From the seductress who flatters with her words. So in this life, there are so many women, so many beautiful women. This is my weakness. One of my weaknesses is women. Sino ba dito mga kalalakihan? Weakness ay babae. So ako lang, weakness. Ako lang may weakness ng babae. It's, it's a terrible temptation in my life. So si Tito ayaw umamin na dyan si Tita Sally. 
It's hard, di ba? It's hard, women, man. This is a terrible temptation. And, uh, but I'm not particularly telling that to this person, but in the, in the scene of her movie, Sa Hansel and Gretel, she's the actress there. And sometimes the devil is like that. The witch is like that. She's, she looks beautiful in our eyes. Her words are very pleasing in our eyes, in our ears. But her true color, she looks like this pala. Ooh. <laughs> so is she still tempting? Is she still, is she still luring us? Diba? And Dina. But this is her true color, the immoral woman. It's a wish pala. It's an evil pala. It's an enemy pala. In verse 17, it says, what happens when we go with this immoral woman, when we go with the seductress, we're going to forsake the companion of her youth. We don't get to enjoy our youth anymore. We don't get to enjoy our life anymore. Why? Because we forget our covenant with our God. We forget our covenant. Why? Because this is where God wants us to be. God wants to take this path of wisdom God wants us to enjoy life, but we get out from it and we choose a different path. We choose the wicked path. And what happens when we're in the wicked path? In verse 18, it says, For her house leads down to death and her paths to death. When we go with the immoral woman, go with the seductress, we go with the devil, it would lead us to our final destination, to our tragic and terrible death. So in verse 19, it says, None who go to her return, nor do they return, regain the paths of life. When, when, when we are in that thorny life, we're in that thorny road, man, I'm so sorry, but it's really hard to get out from there. But God is particularly telling us, maybe we're gonna be at the point there's no more return. We could not get out of anymore. Just like this person, do you know this guy? Who's that guy? That's Michael Jackson. He's really famous. He's really amazing. He's the king of pop. He, he's the best. Everyone wants to be like Michael Jackson. I, I, I used to ad, uh, admire him. I want to be like him. But you know what? In, in the story of his fame, in the story of all his riches and glory, Little did we know that he, he participated pala in a group called Illuminati. And he participated in this group and basically what does this group do? They, they recruit artists, they make them famous, they, the, the Illuminati uh, brings them to higher grounds, gives them fa- uh, uh, um, they provide wealth from them, they endorse them, they put them up. But in return... Sell your soul to the devil. Sell your soul to the devil. Sell your soul to us. And in your in your messages, in the messages of your songs, mis mislead the youth. Bring them to their destruction. We're gonna use entertainment. We're gonna use fame. We're gonna use power to bring this earth, to bring the youth, to bring the people into destruction. So what that's what the Illuminati does. And Michael Jackson was not aware of that. Why? Because he enjoyed life. He rejoiced in all his riches and glory. But he came to a point that he realized it already. And he was trying to get out of it. He was trying, ah, this is not good. My words are not right. I don't want this life anymore. I want to get out right now. I want to get out. But in the CNN, what, what, what's the headlines of that, of that, move, of that scene? He was shouting, he was confessing to his son, they're trying to kill me. They're trying to kill me. Because he wants to confess already what the Illuminati has been doing. He wants to get out from it and wants the Illuminati to stop already. But what happened to him, because he was trying to do this good thing already at the last point of his life, it cost him his death. He was murdered the, the, the news doesn't say that, but when you read other, other facts, they're blaming the Illuminati for his death. But basically, he died a tragic death. Why? Because at the last point of his life, 
He was shouting out, they're trying to kill me. They're trying to kill me. For this man who is so popular, who, who is so famous, who is so rich, how he want that our last breath would be just enjoying all our riches and just enjoying our lives. For all the good labor that we've done, we want to enjoy it at the last moment. But you don't want a tragic death. What would happen in our final destination? So what is God telling us? Here's wisdom, my son. Daughter, here's wisdom. Child, here's wisdom. In verse 20, it says, So you may walk in the path of goodness and keep to the paths of righteousness. So that you, people of Church of God, Marriott Manila, hear wisdom, incline your ear to wisdom, that you may enjoy life that you may enjoy this life. Why? Because there's two destinations in life. In verse 21 to 22, it says, For the upright will dwell in the land. For the upright will enjoy life and keep, and, and the blameless will remain in it. But the wicked, but the wicked will be cut off from the earth, will have a terrible death and the unfaithful will be uprooted from it. So two destinations in life, it's either we enjoy life or we receive a tragic death. Everyone will die, but I pray, right, that in our last moments, in our last days here on earth, it's not going to be terrible, it's not going to be tragic, it's going to be wonderful, it's going to be awesome because we have wisdom in our lives. That's the only message that God has for us today. Value wisdom. Value the wisdom because wisdom is God's personal message for you. And it will guide you through through what you're going through today. And if you take that path of being upright, the path of wisdom, the path towards enjoying life, God says, I will protect you. I will protect you. I promise you, I will protect you. So right now, I'm not sure where you are right now in your life. But for sure, we're in the middle of that crossroad And for those who already nagtampisaw so way of the wicked, today we have a chance to go back to God and say, Lord, I need your wisdom. And for those who are confused, God has shown you clearly the final destinations of life. And it's better to enjoy life. Let's enjoy this life value wisdom and God says I will protect you so if that's your prayer I invite you to just bow down your heads as we prepare the communion if you need to say something to your God today our Father in heaven today is speaking to you right now He's in this place and God is hearing your words today so as the worship team sings this song continually pray as we prepare for our community.
that I might live. You poured out your soul even to death, taking my sin just to forgive. sacrifice. Let it not just be a ceremony that we're, we're gonna, we always do on the first Sunday of the month. But let this communion be our commitment to the Lord, saying, Lord, 
I choose the path of wisdom. For I want, I desire to enjoy life. Not only my own, but also for my family. And this communion is my commitment, Lord. Committing to God alone. That I choose to be upright. And desire your wisdom for my life. For it is your message for me. And God's word says, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Can we all partake of the bread? Hallelujah, Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for your dying on the cross, Lord. Thank you for all your sufferings. But Lord, forgive us for all our sinfulness, all our wickedness, all our evilness, Lord. For, for as we sin, as we fall into temptation, as we commit those small compromises, you little did we know that we're not valuing your message for our lives as we are doing all those things. But right now, Lord, we commit from our hearts that we will make it right this time. Hallelujah. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. This do, for as often as you drink it in remembrance of me, for as often as you eat this bread, and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till we come. Can we all drink of the cup? Hallelujah, Lord Jesus Christ. It's so hard, Lord God, to be upright. It's so hard to be blameless. It's so hard, Lord God, to get away from wickedness. It's so hard, Lord God, to be faithful to you, Lord so hard to be consistent. It's so hard, Lord God, to live a life without sin. But Lord, today we proclaim the Lord's death. And in the Lord's death, there is power. There is power of purity. There is power of grace and mercy. And Lord God, there is power, Lord God, that could change our lives and we will never be the same again. In the power of God's death, Jesus' death, we could be free from sin could be free from slavery of the wickedness and thank you Lord Jesus Christ for speaking to us right now thank you Lord God for giving us once again wisdom for our lives for we need it Lord that we may be keep moving in this life hallelujah Lord Amen. today could we raise up our tithes and offering to our God hallelujah As you raise them high, this is an act of surrender to Him. Lord Jesus Christ, let not money, Lord, lead us into temptation. Let not our riches and glory lead us to sin. For Lord, if we put money as our God, it's the root of all evil. It's the root of all evil. Let not money take control upon our lives. We rebuke it in the name of Jesus Christ. But today, we choose to fear you for it is the beginning of wisdom. And give us wisdom, Lord God, to use this wealth mightily all for your greater glory. And as we lift up our ties to you, this is our offering to you, this is our worship to you. Accept it, Lord God, as a pleasing sacrifice. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for this wonderful service. Thank you for the, our family members who are in this place, my Lord. Lord God, bless them abundantly. Let them receive your word. And as they receive your wisdom, as they receive your message, Lord God, wag mo nang hayaan, pakawalan pa nila ito. Let them stick to this path of wisdom that they may enjoy life. They may enjoy life until their final destination. 
Thank you for this wonderful day. We commit to you all the glory and all the praise in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Everybody shout, Amen and Amen. And hallelujah. God bless everyone. Have a blessed week ahead. Again. All of your love and all of your love